to Rivington. A big win there coming out the gates hot for SKT, taking it 1-0 so far in the series. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start with Champions Life because as we watched it, it was commented around the desk. We loved the approach by EDG here. I really liked SKTs as well, though. In the first time they faced each other, they went with a five threat composition. The Annie is always a threat. You need to keep her in mind because she can CC you, and in the team fight, she's a huge factor. They did the exact same thing here. You're running the Maokai. You can't, you cannot ignore the Maokai. You have the Gragas, you have Cassiopeia with the Kalista and Annie. That's even more CC to layer on top of it. And it's a very similar strategy to what they ran the first time around. EG has to adapt to this pick and ban. Yeah, I think EG already did adapt. They asked the first question that everyone on the desk asks, can Bengi perform on something that isn't the Nuno or the Rek'Sai? So I like the draft. I thought they came out with a clear strategy. Credit to SKT. They definitely dealt with the draft, so it wasn't an impeccable draft, but it asked the biggest question that we were all were asking. Yeah, and spoiler, Bengi performed incredibly well on the Gragas. I think that he was one of the players. Oh, yeah, we have actually... A look in, into EDG. I hope that the coach is doing his job here. Yeah, they've got time to rethink their strategy. Maybe that pick ban change will change. Let's, uh, let's go into that jungle, though. We watched SKT with a very interesting jungle route that was premeditated. The here. tempo of the game was set right from the beginning, and it truly shows how jungle is a team effort. It's not just one guy thinking this out. So he starts doing his own red buff with a really nice leech from the bottom lane that speeds up his jungle. Maokai, on the other hand, puts three saplings at the raptor camp, allowing him to kill all the small ones and get to lane without using the teleport. So when he heads back to lane, Maokai has the teleport advantage. He doesn't have to use teleport. Make, uh, Korra didn't use it either, but he's still down in experience because of the three raptor camps. So he can push out faster than Korra can and get a ward into the red buff before Clearlove can get there. Then he goes finishes a big raptor, goes to the blue buff. To be honest, I think he should have done just the blue buff because he didn't get level three off the raptor camp. A little bit of a, of a mismatch in there, but instead goes for it anyways, tries to kill clear love, and the pressure is on. From that point on, the gank on mid lane and the game is completely snowballed. Yeah, and they read exactly what EDG wanted to do all game. That's why I'm so impressed with the SKT lineup because they were willing to match aggression, especially in the top lane. That turret dive, they overextended for EDG, and SKT were there in a second to really capitalize. They went for a very greedy level one there. EDG wanted everyone in their lanes to be able to start shoving out and get that early aggr aggression that we always talk about. And SKT makes them pay. Really good, smart play. Yeah, and I think slowly but surely EDG actually tried to put on the pressure. And we saw that most dominantly in the top lane where Koro actually has a really good time against the Maokai. Yeah, a lot of people out there noticed Koro's play. They said, or one of our tweets from at the boy, Alex writes, oh my God, Koro, you are a god. Please teach me, Senpai. We're going to roll a clip there in the top lane so you guys can check it out. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I think that there was a little bit sloppy CC layering and then Koro just really nice ultimate in the end of the transformation and with the slither of health is running away any so close the jump and he actually gets the kill and I think we have to really note that the individual performance by EDG was exceptional. I think that Koro did a fantastic job in the top lane. And one thing I want to point out about the whole EDG lineup is it's nearly like they play on instinct alone. They know exactly how much they can live with. And that's why SKT, the an analytical play, is coming out a little bit ahead you see in game one. But if the game deteriorates at all, you expect those instincts to start playing a bigger role. Yeah, I think that just to touch on the early jungle point, I think that that was really smart setup by SKT and that was not something that comes from instinct. Getting level 2 first, pushing out early, getting the, uh, the jungle camp early as well, they set that up really, really prematurely and I think that is something we can look out forward to. I do want to jump into our replay. We're going to go 25 minutes into the game. This ends up being a 4 for 0 for SKT in the Dragon of Results and Baron as right. well. Right here, SKT starting the Dragon. You know you have a lot of Dragon pressure with the with the Cassiopeia and the Callista, Renstack cannot get outsmited, and Bangi is going to be the hero for this fight. Versus a two-threat composition, he goes in, knows that he, he's not in danger, ulti the Orianna, and her flashback is immediately forth. Right here, a misclick by her, taking the lantern, puts her back into the fray and right into range of Marin. As soon as Orianna gets hit with the Twisted Advance, she dies, doesn't get the ultimate off, and it's easy pickings for SKT from this point on. This is what happens when you run a two-threat comp. Nara does not deal enough damage to be a carry. Same goes with the Sejuani. You need the Orianna to stay alive, and Urga isn't really a hyper carry. He's more of a, you know, poke them out here and there and CC them. So 
perfectly play team fight by SKT in that point. Yeah, I think that at that point in the game, they don't do enough damage. If they had a given that up, they had the first two dragons. Why are you fighting against a mid-game Cassiopeia Callista? Just give it up, walk away, live to fight another day. The other thing is you shouldn't feel pressured to fight against a team that secures advantages so easily. Cassiopeia, Callista, you're not going to steal it even if it gets to that point. So don't push the tempo. You're more of a poke comp. Just let them come to you. Well, we'll have more time to talk about this matchup on the other side of the break that we have to take just now as the teams gear up for game two. But don't touch that browser because you're about to get an exclusive sneak peek at the newest champion that will soon be hitting Summoner's Rift. Ladies and gentlemen, here's your inside look at Echo. The boy who shattered time. People waste a lot of time. Then they wish for more. They want more hours in their days. More days in their years. More years in their lives. As if they had all that extra time. They could fix any mistake. I don't need hours or days or years. I only need seconds. Here's the thing about time. If you can't make the most out of any given moment, then you don't deserve a single extra second. 